So the panel was designed to think about the interplay of regulation with reputational risk and how firms are thinking about making an ethical supply chain. Uh, certainly we do a lot of these conferences where the regulatory impact is pushing people to implement programs they haven't before. But the panel was interesting because they said that reputational risk is still very strong. As uh, there are many sort of famous cases of um, corruption internationally, um, also domestically, also um, issues with slave labor that can impact the way people are thinking about their supply chains now. The reputational risk that companies face when that is reported through the media or through the internet or any ways that people find out about this is pretty extreme right now. So not just for regulation purposes but for for reputational risk purposes this is a still a really important topic that drew a lot of attention today. So an ethical supply chain is really trying to enforce the same standards of compliance to laws and regulations and decent working conditions and fair business, not just uh, in the immediate operations, but all through the supply chain. That includes all suppliers and vendors and uh, through their suppliers and subcontractors. This is pretty tough for companies to manage because they have to consider uh, where are they getting certain rare earth minerals uh, per SEC guidelines on conflict minerals all the way through that supply chain. Also, um, corruption and fraud, uh, uh, bribery as with foreign uh, 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 governments, um, all the way to just thinking about forced labor, child labor, uh, any unsatisfying or I'm sorry, unsafe working conditions anywhere are all topical for this right now. We had a couple of good questions from people thinking. Uh, just because we legislate it, do we have to impose that on the rest of the world in all the various conditions? But there was a, some consensus in the room and on the panel that yes, the, the ethical nature of this business and the ethical requirements that companies think about, especially within uh, in-house counsel, do really extend through all those commercial relationships. Make, as difficult as it is, it still remains very important. In-house counsel, I think, are particularly interested in this because they s still own that responsibility for maintaining an ethical workplace even if they're sharing that relationship with compliance officers and risk officers throughout the organization, there's still uh, the mandates that in-house counsel use. So we had two in-house counsels uh, who were explaining to us how they have a variety of, a variety of procedures they use to uh, send questionnaires to vendors, to structure the contracts in a way that they work with the vendors to understand the, the nature of these relationships, the working conditions, uh, the uh, ethical monetary relationships that they have with each other. The in-house counsel really seems to serve all the other groups in the organizations for advising on how to think about the ethical and legal uh, relationships that the business is, is working with.